Bonnie Jarvis, welcome to Unbroken. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me, Alexandra. I really appreciate being here. Oh, my pleasure. I'm so thrilled to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we've been in events together. I, I think I was trying to recall when that was. I think it was a class with Kathy Casey. Were you, yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was last year, I think. But anyway, so it's lovely to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> yeah, same. I know. I, I keep seeing your name around the community. So I'm glad that we're getting this opportunity. Me too. So let's begin. Tell us about your background and how you discovered the three principles. Okay. Um, well, you know, like so many people who have come across the three principles, I was looking around for a very long time. Um, I know people come to this understanding or the understanding finds them maybe is a better way of saying it in when people are looking for very different things. For me, I, my um, seeking, if you will, started when I was really young. I, my, my dad was in a really horrendous accident when I was four. And this was 1960, giving away my age now. He, um, not to go into the details, but he was electrocuted to the point where two silver dollars melted in his pocket, and then he fell three stories. And he, he obviously was given his last rights. No one thought he was going to survive back then, um, but he did. And I don't know, maybe when I was around six or seven, he shared his experience of what happened to him. And now, now we know of what people call near-death experiences, but that term wasn't even around back then. And I don't really know what it was he said that impacted me so deeply, but I just, I think I was... I was thinking of it as the quality of what he was sharing just touched me so deeply that I knew this physical reality was not all there was, but I didn't know what else, you know, what else was out there. And so again, I was really young then I was going to Catholic school and I didn't, you know, I, actually I learned really quickly to not talk about it in Catholic school because it was not approved of oh. and it wasn't a well-known thing. And I think that that experience um, made me, I guess, a, a secret seeker. Mm. <laughs> so I really, I, I looked at so many different things. I dipped my toes into so many different things, different, once I got out of high school, different religions, I, you know, what I sought out channelers. I, I um, did different self-help programs that were spiritually oriented. Um, I, I did a spiritual psychology master's degree. Um, you know, it, this was over a period of like maybe, well, how long, 40-ish years. And um the, in the spiritual psychology program, the organization about 10 years after I, I graduated from there, they were doing a coaching program. And I had just, well, I should say my other parallel life <laughs> was that I got a master's degree in computer science and worked in many corporations and definitely was a secret seeker through that because it was okay to be in a religion, but everything else was very woo-woo, so really didn't talk about anything. Um, but I would pop in and out of corporate America jobs. It was, it you know, at that time in the 80s and 90s and even early 2000s, it was very easy to leave one job and find another because not a whole lot of people knew a whole lot about technology then. And so in 2013, I decided that was it. I was leaving corporate America for the last time. It was not where I wanted to be. And um, one of my very, very close friends uh, was became the admissions director of, of the organization that ran the spiritual psychology program. And she called and said, well, if you don't have any plans, which I didn't, I, I just knew I didn't want to continue on the path that I was in corporate America. 
she said, you know, why don't you take this coaching program? And I was like, mm, okay, have the time, have the money, I'll do it. Turned out to be the best thing ever because one of the facilitators um, introduced a little video of someone talking about insight. And at the time I had to go research everything. So again, it was 2013. There wasn't a whole lot on the web at the time, but I did manage to track down what the three principles were. And it was on a Wikipedia page of all things that I was reading it and, and it just hit me like, oh, this is what is before all of those other things that I was looking at, all of those paths that I took, I couldn't get to the beginning of them because there was usually a lot of things to do. And, and uh, so I, you know, follow something for a year or two and then look for the next thing. And, and I won't, I can't say I understood anything that I was reading, but I just had a knowing. So would you like me to keep going? From yes, that? please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, again, I I was following breadcrumbs, really. And I heard, um, I kept looking and looking. And again, 2013, there were some videos, but there wasn't a whole lot out there. And I finally came across that there was a conference going on in St. Paul, Minnesota, like a month later. So I hopped on a plane and I went to that. And then... Um, that led me to meeting the woman who uh, would organize the the three, it was a three PGC conference, and the woman that was organizing them lived near me, so we got to be friends, and then at the conference, I believe it was there, I learned that Christine Heath, um, who is one of the original board members for three PGC and still is on the board, was doing a workshop in Hawaii, and I was like, oh, I can do, I can go there. I'm not working now. So I went, I, I think it was like September, October was the conference. And then November was this workshop. And then I learned about the Pranskis um, doing the first um, practitioner retreat in February, 2014, went to that, then went to Salt Spring Island. And then I volunteered to help with the next um in-person conference that 3PGC was doing and got to know Chris a little bit more. And, you know, looking back, it was, it was so much following that little voice that said, yeah, do this next, do this next. But I think when it was happening, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that's what I was doing. Um, so I think it was Chris that asked me, maybe this was 2015, they were trying to start a free webinar program and it was sort of a start and stop. And she asked if I'd be interested in volunteering to do that. So I, I did. And, and then it turned into one from one a month to two a month and that, that program is still running. And then the, the woman who originally did their newsletters and updated the first website was leaving. And, and that's when I actually went to work for three PGC very part-time and, learn more about um, the organization and then had a ton of ideas about what we could do online because that was my background. And started to talk with Chris a lot more and with the then president Don Donovan about what else we could do. And finally, I think it was 2018, they, they said, yeah, go ahead and let's build the new website. And they needed it done by the con the in-person conference in 2019. And I'm, I'm kind of telling this story because looking back, it, I feel like my finding the three principles and three PGC when I did was incredible synchronicity because once the new website was done and we could, we could create a membership site, then I started, I think that's when I started working for them full-time for three PGC full-time. And 
started suggesting online programs. And that that wasn't really a well-known thing at the time. And and the board was a bit hesitant because, you know, getting the feeling per in person um, was something they just weren't sure of. Um, if that could be sort of transmitted or or really felt across the internet. But we finally, you know, said, yeah, let's do it. And we ended up running a, we were originally shooting for a 48 hour conference, but it turned into like 54 hours of continuously running sessions, which was a lot of work to put together and, and do it, but it, it turned out to be incredible. People loved it. We had something like three or 400 people participating people who couldn't travel to the in-person, you know, it, it truly was a global event and it was run it, at time periods where anybody could watch it. And here's the synchronicity of it. We ran it the last two days of February, first day of March of 2020. And oh. then the pandemic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so we were set, we were all set up, you know, the board could see this was a great platform to do things. And, and so we were able to build a practitioner program through that. And, and we had like maybe four or five incredible programs, like not, not full on conferences, but programs where people could really participate in. Um, and, and we were able to, you know, to really keep sharing this understanding when everybody had to stay at home, basically. So it was, you know, again, looking back, like while I was in it, I didn't see the the beauty of following the breadcrumbs and the timing of it. But looking back, it's like, wow, that was perfect timing for somebody like me to come in and do it because I just happened to have the right skills, you know, to help them out. And uh, yeah, so that's how I got involved with the three principles and 3PGC. Wow, that's so great. I have a few follow-up questions then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for our listeners, 3PGC stands for Three Principles Global Community. So it's sort of like the governing body, for lack of a better word, uh, for the three principles. And um, you said that you felt like the principles explained what was before all the other things that you had been seeking. Can you, could you say more about that? That intrigues me so much. Well, you know, at the time I didn't know what, what I meant by that. I didn't, I just, I just knew this was underneath it all, you know, any, any of the, like I look, you know, I dip my toes in Buddhism and Sikhism and all, all sorts of, all sorts of self-help. And I knew there was something more to all of those things I was looking at, I just couldn't get to it mm. for whatever reason. And and now the words that I would put on it and now what I understand of it is that the three principles truly um, are the formless principles that explain the human experience. So those, those are the words I would have put on it now. But at mm -hmm. the time, I didn't. I didn't have those words. Yeah. And, you know, even in, in talking about my dad's experience in looking back at that, what I can now, what I think now the quality that I felt, I think was he, when he talked about the light, you know, a lot of near death experiences talk about seeing the light and he was drawn to this light and he felt that it was warm and loving and he did not want to come back. He wanted to go through but he, you know, in his words, he was told to come back. And I, I think just the feeling that he shared when he was talking about that was probably what what drew me into looking for what that was. Right. And did that, you said you were raised Catholic. So he was Catholic at the time this happened? You know, I I was four when his accident happened. So I don't really remember whether he was a churchgoer before then, I don't think he ever went. I don't remember him ever going to the, to church um, after that. Mm -hmm. And possibly because of what he felt mm -hmm. in that experience. Um, I don't, I don't know. I never really, I never talked to him about that. What I, what I do know that he really got it. We, 
we didn't talk about it a whole lot. Like I remember when um, Raymond Moody came out with his book, Life After Life, and he coined the the term near-death experience. Um, we were like, oh my God, other people have this, you know? And we talked yeah. about it then. And this is the thing, <laughs> you know, you didn't make this. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't know this for sure, but I'm going to guess that doctor, if he shared this with any doctors or nurses at the time, they probably thought, oh, you were in a coma and, you know, whatever. But um, we talked about it a lot. I would say the last six months of his life and what what it really brought for him that I got was and he he lived this happened to him in 1960 he passed away in 98 so he lived a long time after that and um but he what it really gave him was that he was not he did not fear death he knew like, I remember talking to him and he said something like, no, I know where I'm going next. Like, yeah. I, I've already felt that, you know. So that was, you know, that was, uh, I think, beautiful. And I think, I think that's one of the things he gave me is that I have never had a fear of dying either. Mm. Not, I'm not really crazy about having to go through what you might have to go through before that. Right. But there can be a lot of suffering in that but yeah yeah but and and with the understanding of the three principles that might even give me a different perspective of that statement yes you know, yes I said that off the tip of my tongue but in reality this understanding and and constantly looking and seeing things more deeply seeing new insights it it you you come back with a a different perspective on the same thing so yes absolutely i've been thinking about this a little bit lately as well the whole um yeah, I feel the same way that the idea of death doesn't bother me at all. I'm interested in, you know, what that looks like and the steps leading up to it. I, you know, I hope they're not too painful or terrible. And then, you know, because our experience does come from the inside out, I realize that it is possible to experience peace no matter what we're going through. And yeah. So all of that is just so interesting. I could talk about that for hours for sure. Yeah, that could be yeah. a whole other podcast. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, what a fascinating experience your dad went through. And just that idea that he he must have thought he was he was alone in that for so long. And I imagine, yeah, coming from a Catholic background too, he he was probably very anxious about ever bringing that up with anybody you know, that he, any adults, I guess I should say, that he knew. Um, yeah, wow, fascinating. Really, really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate yeah, you're it. Welcome. You're welcome. And it makes me wonder too about his, you know, any conflict that he felt, but, you know, about that experience. Yeah, anyway, fascinating. Yeah, um, <laughs> there's, there's so much way. It, you know, I can look back and say, oh, I wish I would have like been in this place where I am now to ask him more questions. Yeah. Um, but, and, you know, I'm glad I got the opportunity to talk to him about it at the end of his life. And, you know, I, I also just want to say this, a near-death experience is not what happened with Sydney Banks. I, right. I remember sharing this with um, some, one of Sydney Banks' original students and, and I kind of got corrected it's like this is not what happened it's like no I didn't mean to suggest that it's like he you know my dad just happened to be, be leave his body and see that there was something else but what the experience that Sydney Banks had was completely different and deeper and amazing yeah Yes. Yeah, no, that's a great clarification. Thank you. Yeah. It's important for people to see the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's really interesting. So, so you worked for the 3PGC for a while. And I want to ask you two questions about that. What, 
And I think you've already addressed the first one, actually. I was going to ask you, what did the job teach you? And you've already talked about looking back and seeing the way that life was leading you in in a direction. And, and it sounds like you didn't fight that too much. You know, there wasn't too much fight in you. Is that true? That is true. I before before um, saying listening to your wisdom, I would call it intuition. Mm. And I've always had a strong sense of intuition. I didn't always follow it. So <laughs> following the, I think I I was using the term following the breadcrumbs and just listening to what was coming next was was not um, a huge jump for me. Mm. Um, but there were certainly plenty of times when. I could have said, no, I don't want to follow these breadcrumbs anymore. Um, but I didn't. Something something else was saying, no, no, keep following these, you know, keep doing this. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, and it led you and seems to be anyway, in such a nice direction. Yeah. To something that you needed. Yeah. Well, and that I think that's true. Whenever we really listen to our inner guidance, you know, that, if there was anything that I would want to share with people, it's that learning, learning um, what that feels like, sounds like, or however you, you get your guidance from wisdom or your intuition, whatever you want to call it, like really get really cozy and familiar with how that feels different than what's coming from your intellect or your personal wants and desires, because it it really does seem to me, it really looks to me like that's the way to go to have a happier life. <laughs> yes. Nice. Oh, that's great. And so speaking of which, then how did you know um, that it was time to leave that experience? You know, that, that was a knowing too. I, that was about mid 2022. I started to get nudges like, you know what, you've, you've done what you've come here to do. And, and it's time to move on. And, and I did, um, I did give notice at the end of, well, I, I think it was the beginning of December of 2022 for two months. And then they, what I, what I, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of a jack of all trades, master of none when it comes to the <laughs> online business. So I could do a whole wide variety of things, but in replacing me, it took a little longer because, because, um, you know, they ended up having to bring on a number of people. So I didn't leave in the beginning of 2023. I, I waited until everything was completely set up. And then I left at the end of I think it was September, 2023. Mm. Yeah. But again, that was, that was a nudge. And I, I didn't have anything planned next. Mm. You know, that, that's the, that's the, um, that, that's the part that can be really scary. It's the part people say living in the unknown. I, I guess that's what it, that looked like to me, but I had done that so many times in my life just like left jobs without really knowing what was going to be next and everything worked out. Okay. So I, I felt okay doing that. And, um, and it's really, it, it, it's been incredible. Um, what's unfolded since then. I, um, I was, I was pretty busy minded when I was working for three PGC cause I was doing a broad range of, of things behind the scenes, you know, I, I was um, like taking care of just a lot of detailed mm. things for, for the online business to keep running. And, and it kept my mind really busy. And so like, I feel like I've, I had this massive download of understanding coming, but I was so busy with details that I didn't really see what I was what I was, what I could see because I had so many details on my mind all the time. Right. And so after I, I left, um, it was like this, because I really didn't have the next thing lined up. There was this vast opening of space. And 
that was a wonderful um, opportunity also to really let things unfold. And one of the things I did um, was I, so I know, you know, Azul Liguzaman. So um, she and I became friends maybe a couple of years ago. I, I kept hearing her name, but I never met her. So I reached out to her one day and we just really hit it off and we started talking regularly. She's so wonderful. And we would share insights. And what we found was, I mean, that's one of the things we did. We talked about a lot of things, but um, what was so wonderful about that is that we started to notice how sh sharing our insight was helping, we were helping each other see more mm -hmm. of how we were being guided. It was like hearing, hearing, you know, what we saw was, was helping the other to look more to see how we were being guided. And so one of the things that came out of that, I think we started in November, we decided to um, offer a free webinar series where once a month we um, we offer an open call to anybody and we called it What Has Wisdom Shown You Lately? And, and it's just an open discussion where everybody can share or just come and listen. And so, you know, and then, then what grew out of that, which I honestly did not really expect at all. I, I, I guess I really thought whatever I did next was going to be a technical thing again, because uh -huh. um, that's what my background is. Yeah. But we started talking about doing, what would we do if we did a, a program to teach this understanding or point people in the direction and help people to learn to share it and 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 help people start up a business of some kind and we came i'm going to say it came through us we we ended up writing a year long program that we called the heart of service in like a week or two mm. and then we put together the web page and i think we only sent out three emails and we filled our program it's very small we mm. we didn't want to have a big group and that's been incredible and again, following those breadcrumbs, those nudges, right? It it was just the next thing to do. And it, it's been really great. We have guest speakers in it. And it's it's just been a phenomenal um, program so far. And the participants seem to really be enjoying it as well. And we're in like the third month of a year-long program. So, mm. so cool. yeah. <laughs> Well, and thinking about it, really, it doesn't surprise me that that's sort of the way things unfolded after your job with the three PGC, because that's how they ha happened going into it, you know? Yeah, yeah. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think I always looked at myself, well, um, because three PGC was not the only person I did this. When I first learned about the three principles, I had a handful or two of um, practitioners as, as clients. And I did, you know, their online website, membership site, et cetera. So I really saw myself more as a background person. Mm. So I, th I think that's why it surprised me. Oh, okay. You know, I'm, I'm facilitating, co-facilitating with Azul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So one of the things, shifting gears slightly, one of the things that we corresponded about as we were setting up this uh, time to talk was you said you were really interested in lately the the sort of the one of the more famous quotes from Sydney Banks. So why don't you share that quote with us and then tell us what you're seeing in it lately? Okay, I th I think what we're talking about, you know, I'm going to read it because okay terrible with remembering quotes <laughs> okay so I, I always ask for forgiveness for who whoever the original person was because I know I botched them okay so I think you're talking about if the only thing people learned was not to be afraid of their experience that alone would change the world that's right yeah um yeah that that quote has so many levels to it you know it's like you can read it at first and say oh yeah you know, I can, you know, in, unless I'm, you know, guns being pointed to my head, 
I, I probably don't really have to be afraid of my experience. And then as you start to look deeper into the principles um, and start to understand like, oh, right, we really create our experience. Our experience is truly an inside out experience. And there is nothing to be afraid of. And, and you know, it just goes deeper from there. Yeah. So I, I do. That, that is one of my very favorite quotes from Sid Banks. I, I do have another favorite quote right now that's been, um, and this is not a Sidney Banks quote, it's a, a quote by Rumi mm. that I probably first learned about 30 years ago. And um, it just has taken on such new meaning for me in the last six months. And that is, you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. Oh. And God, that has... That's another one with so many layers, but that has such deep meaning. It's like, yes, when you really start to look down this path, when you really start to look at the three principles as truly being principles in the formless that create everything and that we are part of and we are... You know, people people say, and I guess Sid said this as well, that he would, I think he would use the words divine mind, thought, and consciousness, as opposed to personal mind, thought, and consciousness. But it's really one thing. And we just have the opportunity to share in that and to um, listen to the wisdom that comes through that. And, and so we truly are the entire ocean in a drop. Like that. God, that's just so uh, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's so much there, isn't there? And it, yeah. when I heard you say that quote, I felt that thing that happens when something makes the leap beyond my logical brain, you yeah. know, I, and, uh, and it resonates, you know, within you. I love the that feeling. Yeah. 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 yeah that's lovely. <laughs> so um, you mentioned the, the webinar series that you did with Azul. And I will link, Azul's been on the show. So I will link in the show notes to her episode. Um, so why don't I ask you, what has wisdom shown you lately? Well, that. You know, that is a great question. <laughs> and um, so let's see how to describe this. So what I've really been seeing is that we all have, we have so much that we can see, right? If, if we listen to our inner guidance, to wisdom, we also have conditioning right but beliefs that are hidden that we don't e only we don't even realize they're there until a light is you know is shown upon them and then it's like oh and I had you know as my mind got really quiet I guess all the learning that I was absorbing but not really realizing what I was what I was how much I really saw kind of came, brought this, I'm going to call it a bubble of <laughs> conditioned thinking that sort of unraveled itself. And some of the things I don't even really know what they were, but I knew, I felt so much lighter and it, it was, um, I don't know. I, the latest image I've, I have of it was like, if you know, if you have a ball of yarn, and you hold one end and you just push it and it'll just keep going until it reaches the end. It's like, that, that's what the experience felt like. It's like just all these beliefs that, that were so deeply ingrained that I wasn't aware of how they were con sort of controlling my life because I would make decisions because those were, were I thought were truths, not not 
beliefs that I could see through, right? So as that all came to the surface, it was like, I don't know, just years of weights <laughs> lifted. And some of it, some of it, I didn't really know what they were in particular, but I knew something was opening and some were very painful, mm. you know, and when I'd see them, because I could see how it drove actions or reactions in my life that I thought because I believed it, it was, I, it needed a reaction. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so just all of that opening up, um, has been phenomenal. And I, I don't know, around two or three months ago, I, I feel it's because I let go of this whole, you know, bundle of conditioned thinking that, um, what, what's, what I've been noticing is that the nudges that I keep getting now, it's like when I, we all, we all seem to feel our feelings in different ways. Some people have very specific things in their body that they feel their emotions in. I don't really, but what I do notice is sort of a, a wave of energy, hmm. so like nothing really specific, but what I've been noticing is, is that I'm, I'm getting um, nudges quick, quick, more quickly as that wave of energy comes. And it, it's the same nudge very often. It's come back to the moment, come back to the moment. And I got to tell you, like that is the most, I don't know, it's, it's been the most incredible experience to keep getting reminded to come back to the moment when it's, I mean, I get them when I'm starting to, you know, have some kind of judgment or something going on because in the moment that doesn't exist, mm. right? In the moment. And when it first, when I first started to, to sort of get this, I was calling it it's been pushing me into my puddle of kindness. <laughs> like, I could feel so much kindness towards whatever I was judging, especially, you know, judgments that were coming against myself. But since then, I've sort of morphed it into this, um, this like ocean of liquid love. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, that's what it feels like. It's like, I can, I get nudged back into just taking a dive into it. And even if it's, even if it's just for like a nanosecond, and then I pick up that, that thinking again, I come out of it in such a, with such a different perspective, like the feeling changes. And uh, yeah, that's just been, that's, it's been luxurious almost, you know? And every once in a while, I get to stay in it more than a nanosecond. Like mm. people will call it being in the flow. And I, I can, you know, I can be there for a little while longer before, before thinking takes me back into whatever I've decided to make up. And, and everybody can do that. Like that's, that's what everybody can do because, you know, we, we're, we're taught a lot that now is the only moment there is like there now is as the only thing there is. And it's so true. It's like, because everything, all our thinking is either thoughts from the past or thinking about the future. And, and so when you come into that moment, even if it's just for a nanosecond, it's no attachment to thoughts and it's so beautiful. So I would say that, that to me right at this time period is the most significant thing that I would really say that wisdom has been showing me lately to just mm -hmm. keep coming back to the present moment. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. And I want to pull out one thing you said a little bit earlier in that, which was you talked about how when some of your beliefs were unraveling, that could be a little bit painful. Do you, could you share an example with us? And if you can't think of one right now, that's okay. Um, you know, nothing. Um, 
just trying to actually one nothing is really coming to mind now but what I can tell you is that um, I'm not a big crier but man I would sit and sob at, mm. at some of the things that were coming to life and I I'm not even sure if I always knew what it was when I would start but I, but what it, what I did know is not to try to stop not to do anything about it mm-hmm. you know and that's really where when people when when people who talk about the three principles say there's nothing you have to do like that's where I think that applies it's like something was coming through me it was coming out of me it was energy moving through and there was nothing that I had to do about it I didn't have to look for better thoughts I didn't have to you know make myself do something else I could just sit there with it and wait for wisdom to tell me what to do next Mm. so you know to me that's that's one of the misunderstandings I think a lot of people have when they come into this understanding is that there's nothing to do that's where I think that applies it doesn't mean you're going to sit on the sofa for for the rest of your life and do nothing (laughs) it means there's nothing you have to do yes will will inform you what to do next right yeah (laughs) And I loved your wool analogy, you know, your ball of wool analogy, because I, and it reminded me when I was a kid, my grandmother used to knit a lot or was it crochet anyway, one of the others. And she taught me that when you have a a skein of wool, if you pull one, there's two ends, right? If you pull one of them, it can kind of become a bit of a tangled mess. If you, but if you find the, the other end, it just comes out effortlessly and it doesn't get all knotted up you know uh, in itself and it almost just sort of falls apart and it's all very easy so that's what yeah that was kind of touching me when you spoke about that there's two ways to approach this oh what I love that you just said that because that's so true it's like there you know some of the the um the mem- the conditioned thinking that was coming up, it's like, I know I saw it before, but I was probably pulling the wrong end. Mm. Oh, I love that. Thank you mm. for sharing that. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I was pulling the wrong end and making the, the ball even tighter. But yeah, but once I got a hold of the right end, it all flowed out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's beautiful. Well, that was fun. We created that together. That felt really good. <laughs> that's great well as we um come towards the end of our time together I want to ask you is there anything that we haven't touched on that you'd like to share with our listeners today I I think I already said this but this, this would be what I would share and that is you know if there's if there's anything that you set an intention to do it's to really get cozy and familiar with how you hear wisdom or see wisdom. Like, I, I'm i sure it comes to everybody in different ways. And even when I think about how I connect with that, sometimes it's just a knowing. There's no words. I just know what to do next. But I've also had times where it's yelled at me because I wasn't following it, you know, so I heard words. So it, or I'm sure it probably comes to people in feeling too. It's like how, however that is, like, if, if you can get familiar with that, with, with listening to that, hearing that as, and distinguishing it from your personal wants and desires, I, I, you know, it just helps life unfold in a magical way, mm. you know, really magical way. And there's no techniques and you, you can't make it happen. I think you can set an intention or create an environment with being open. But as far as I'm aware, there are no, there's nothing you can do to make that happen <laughs> other than being open to listening, to hearing it. Right. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. That's great. So where can we find out more about you and your work? Um, I do have a very succinct one page website. (laughs) Actually, it's two pages now. It's bonniejarvis.com. Okay. Uh, I 
I had a website years ago, but once I started working for 3PGC full time, I closed it down and and so I've recently rebuilt it. So because I do, I, I have a couple of, of things coming up. There's um, <clears throat> the What Has Wisdom Shown You Lately is something that Azul and I do for free every month. And there's also um, the year-long program that we call the Heart of Service that we are talking about doing again because mm. we're just loving the program. So we um, set up a wait list or a notify me list for that. And then um, I'm also fortunate enough to be um, doing another program with Kathy Casey and Mike Hurd. And that is called, hope I remember this correctly, Stress and anxiety are just an illusion. It's not what you think, or is it? <laughs> <laughs> and that, um, I don't have all the details of that. I believe we're going to start in July, and it will be four, four sessions over four weeks. But more details will, will come out of that soon. So so that's what I have. And I, do, I, I have been doing one-on-one um, -on -one sessions. I've been calling them heart to heart session conversations. Mm. So that's that's all you can and there's a way to contact me on that website as well. So okay, great. Well I will put a link uh in the show notes to your website, oh, bonniejarvis.com. Yeah, thank you. Well yeah. thank you so much for being with me here today, Bonnie. It's been just lovely chatting with you. Yeah, it really has. Thank you so much. And you know I really hope I've I've always considered myself somebody who is more like um, numbers, math, and and coding oriented, and and not very eloquent with words. Um, so I hope I was able to share in a way that at least one person is touched by it. If if just one person sees something, this I'd be really, really deeply grateful. So thank you so much. Mm, you're so welcome. And I I would bet that way more than one person is going to be touched by what you've said. You did a great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye-bye.